Well, here's a man who's in the Hall of Fame. We just mentioned him a while ago. I know he's got a busy day today, but he's carving out some time for us. Hall of Fame manager of the New York Yankees, uh, Joe Torrey. Joe, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you guys? We're doing great. So unanimity, I, I think it, it's, almost, it's almost perfect for Mariano Rivera. Is that your feeling or not? Uh, yes. Uh, I thought it was funny. I tried to call him last night. It went right to voicemail. No surprise. And then I, I, call, I send a text, and all of a sudden I get a call back, and he puts me on boy, he puts me on uh, speaker with his whole family. It was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I told him I congratulated him on the, on the you know and just unanimous uh, election, and I said there may be others. I said, but you're the first, and there'll never be another one of those. So. Uh, certainly earned and uh, I don't think anybody can ever question it. Now you, you could speak to this uh, better than me because you were inside that room. I, I got to see the first and last pitch for Mariano which is an honor for me but I always tell people Joe of, of all the superstars that I've, I've had the privilege of, of being around he was the most humble genuine classy guy. He would treat the people that would mop the, the hallways outside Yankee Stadium the same way as he would treat, I think, you. Did you sense that within that room as well? Yeah, he's a very sensitive, uh, very spiritual individual. Um, and again, uh, you know, it served him well in the role he had. I mean, the, uh, I remember he, he spoke before Game 7 uh, against uh, Arizona. Uh, and it was really along the spiritual lines. And, and again, not that, you know, uh, the good Lord is going to do anything for you. I mean, you have to do it yourself. But the fact that, you know, you just have to be at peace in your mind. And, uh, you know, he obviously handed, uh, handled that role as well as anybody's ever done it. And, um, and it certainly served him well. And it wasn't like he didn't have heartbreaking situations. The home run to Alomar in 97, obviously the end of the 2001 World Series. And How do, how do you explain on the grandest stage of the mall where you can have those failures and, and not have it affect you when it just seems to cripple other players? Well, we weren't sure in '97 because that was, you know, that was new turf for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he had, uh, even though he had a real good year statistically, uh, it was still the first time in postseason in that role. Uh, even though he w he was certainly uh, in great deal of stress in '96 too. But uh, you know, we and Mel, Mel Stottlemyre and I obviously felt that we needed to address it. And, and you know, when we flew back to New York uh, after Game Five uh, in '97, we we grabbed him uh, off the plane, took him to a little isolated spot on the tarmac, and and just basically said we wouldn't have been there without you. And just to let him know how we felt and how the whole team felt that he didn't let anybody down because I know he had that uh, feeling and he's always been a team guy and uh, that was all that you know I had one game in Washington I remember I told him I wasn't going to use him and I look out there in the eighth inning and he's out there waving his arms here I am but uh, <laughs> I, knew I didn't use him I probably should have as a, the, the result of the game but uh, you know he uh, and and then again after the tarmac uh, meeting uh, the following spring, first day, the pitchers and catchers showed up. Mel and I took them down the right field line at, uh, line at, at Steinbrenner Field and sat them on the tarp and had the same conversation. So, again, we didn't know if we had to do that, uh, but, you know, we felt better that uh, we addressed it and, and got it over with. And, you know, he, he's never looked back. I mean, again, not that I think... Uh, the, the conversation had anything to do with it, but he's special. His special makeup, uh, and he he certainly, uh, he, you know, it's interesting about it, as long as his career was, is, is the fact that he never really altered the type of pitcher he was. Yeah, you, know, you see other guys who have been around; they have to make adjustments on, you know, like a CC Sabathia. You know, I mean, he doesn't throw at 98 anymore, so he's going to have to pitch a little bit differently. And uh, Mariano was the same guy, which is pretty remarkable uh, that he was able to do that all those years. I just saw a tweet, uh, Joe. Uh, David Cohn went to Mel Stoudemire's funeral, and he tweeted out that Mel, the name of Mel's boat was Mo in the Ninth, and said to mm -hmm. Mo, Mo, I, I just want you to know how much Mel loved you. 
accurate, obviously. He probably just felt very special about Mariano. Well, you know, uh, uh, mowing the ninth, uh, it, it certainly made all our jobs a lot easier. You never had any question on, you know, who was going out there and how long he was going to stay. So, uh, but yeah, I, I know I, I was, you know, I was at uh, a funeral also, and David, as articulate as always, w did a great job. You taught him, you taught him well, Michael, <laughs> by the way. And, <laughs> but it, it was, um, you know, he had high regard. And the one thing about Mel, you know, getting to that subject, Mel, Mel had high regard for uh, you, whether you, you know, saved 40 games, 120, or pitched 20 innings. He, he had that kind of personality and made you feel as important as, uh, you know, the the All Star on the team. So, you know, he's going to be missed, but uh, I think it was a great deal of benefit to, you know, uh, having Mariano around him. You know, we talk about New York and how tough it is and how, believe it or not, guys like Mo and Jeter were actually booed at Yankee Stadium. And yeah, I, guess, I forget what year it was, Michael, back in the early 2000s when Mo blows, blows a save against the Red Sox and, get, and, and got booed. And he said he handled everything great, but how do you think it felt for him like during a time like that where even, even all the greatness the Yankee fans could still turn on him like that? Well, uh, I'm the one that had uh, an issue with that one. I looked up and I just shook my head, you know, mm. like, how dare you, you know, this, right. this guy. But uh, Mariano, you know, I mean, that particular day, I think he would have booed himself. But, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that goes with the territory, you know. You know, I, I, I mentioned to somebody, I'm here in uh, uh, Scottsdale right now because we have our annual umpires retreat, and I said, you know, it's like anything else you do. You know why winning feels so good? It's because losing was right there next to it. And it's, uh, you know, it's something you have to deal with. There's always a danger uh, when, when there's, uh, you know, when there's something at stake. So uh, Mariano's uh, approach, as I said earlier, is perfect for a closer because you have to have a short memory where you did well or you, did, uh, you didn't do so well the day before. What's your thoughts on Messina? Uh, he was with you uh, for a long time. Didn't get to win a World Series between the two Yankee World Series, but obviously um, an unbelievable pitcher pitched his entire career in the AL East. Well, I really appreciate it, uh, Moose. I mean, it was funny. And here, you know, Montoursville. I mean, I'm going to make a call. Now, I don't think his line's going to be busy. You know, I mean, I, I just called him, and he answered the phone. He's, hello. <laughs> I said, Moose, this is Tory. And uh, by the end of the conversation, he sounded a little more excited. But, uh, yeah, Moose was special. I'm happy for him. And I, I know I, I heard the comments about post season play. I don't think anybody's won a bigger game than he did in 01 in, uh, in winning game three of, of the division series, that one nothing game that, of course, Jeter's flip play was at the end of it. But, uh, and also the relief know. outing in game seven in 2004, yeah. people, uh, 2003, that was huge. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, before the game, uh, Mel came into my office and told me who he had available. You know, it's like a, it's a game seven, man. And uh, and he says, you know, and Moose, Moose is available out of the bullpen. But you know, I, you know, I told him we would just start an inning with him. We wouldn't use him in the middle of the inning. So what do I do? I bring him in with the bases loaded and nobody out. <laughs> And <laughs> I gave him the ball. I didn't say a word. And I walked off the field, and he pitched whatever he pitched, three innings or so. And he come over to me after we took him out of the game. He said, I thought I wasn't, you know, in a half-joking manner. He said, I thought I wasn't, you weren't going to start an inning. I mean, you were only going to start an inning with me. You weren't going to bring me in the middle of an inning. I said, I guess we lied to you. <laughs> I said, what else can I tell you? <laughs> no. but, uh, and I said, you give me an idea. Next year, it may be worth pitching you out of the bullpen. And he walked away from me. Now, but, in uh, that same game, Mariano obviously stayed on the mound, stayed on the mound. And you had told him, I think after three innings, that's it. How would you have ever taken the ball away from him if Boone doesn't hit that home run? I wouldn't have. I mean, I wouldn't have because, uh, you know, he was pretty determined. And I think what he did right after that, getting out there on the mound and, you know, gathering the dirt or kissing the mound, whatever he was doing, he was, you know, he was so committed to making sure he was the last pitcher in that game for us.